does Keith add a new position at his minimum sizing? In this particular question, it was uh, specifically mentioning, um, sorry, specifically mentioning uh, TLT and IEF. Uh, the question came out on, on um, I believe, four days ago was, was Monday. So again, uh, you know, on Monday, he added 50 basis points of TLT. And, and what I think, you know, again, this, this, this subscriber, Alan, may have just missed on Friday that he added uh, TLT at his min sizing inside of the re-rank product. And IEF has been inside of the Mucker family office for a few weeks. In fact, it was added on, on January 20th, to be specific, IEF at a min sizing. So, um, yeah, he 100% he adds, uh, when he adds something to the portfolio, he adds it at a min sizing. Now, he may um, incrementally add that over the day or over the course of the morning um, or what have you. But, uh, yeah, when something goes in the portfolio, it goes in at, at, at a min size. And I think if, you know, I personally write down the re-ranks every day from, from Keith, Keith that we get, uh, largest to smallest, and, and, and the change changes that he's making. So whether it's plus 50 bips of GLD, IEF, what have you, um, and, and going from there, right, or, or subtracting, you know, TLT, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I, I do that, and, and I do that in order to kind of easily reference and review on a daily, weekly basis. Uh, I can flip through the notebook, and, and it's right there. Um, so I can, it, that, that, that's the biggest thing for me is, like, the ease of access inside the notebook. That's why I write a bunch of stuff down in there because, um, again, it's just I can flip back to, you know, let me just flip back to... January 26th, and he sold all of his SPLV. He added 50 basis points of IGD, Platinum, GDXJ, Thailand, and he was minus 50 bips of URA. January 26th, that took me, what, five seconds? Um, so again, it's just, you know, these are the things why I write it down. You don't have to write it down. Um, even if you don't touch your portfolio daily, uh, looking at and tracking the re-rank can be uh, really, really powerful and, and can, can provide a glimpse into the shifts that Keith is making. Um, I think it's really helpful to review that on a weekly basis. Again, even if you're only touching your portfolio for your clients, let's just say you're professional and, and you can't trade as frequently uh, for your clients, um, but you do so on a weekly or monthly or, or basis, well, you, you can track the additions and subtractions inside of, of um, or inside of the Mucker family office, what, what Keith is signaling to you as a Macro Pro subscriber who has the re-ranked product. Um, what did Keith add and, and subtract, you know, ex, you know, in terms of, you know, that particular piece of inventory and, and, and you know, how does that compare on my execution or, or what I've done this month? Um, I think, you know, I, I quickly put together uh, some changes to the Mucker family office. So that's uh, slide. Yeah, perfect. Um, Marina, I think that'd be slide 11 if you don't mind pulling that up. Oh, you guys are already so ahead of me. That's amazing. Uh, so again, just to kind of highlight here, this is uh, just this week alone, right? So, so far this week. I, I ca ca calculated or just quickly added in, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and, and yesterday's uh, additions and subtractions. So what you'll see here is that, you know, big call out is uh, he's down, he's down, uh, you know, BTAL, you know, he took out right here, right? He took out minus 150 basis points uh, earlier this week. So, uh, you know, as the S&P's gone down, you know, he's taken, he's, he's kind of reduced his posi positions there. Uh, in terms of stuff that he's added, let's go green. Um, in terms of stuff that he added, yesterday he added these two down here, so that's check, right? Check, check. Uh, New Zealand, that'd be up on the board, right, in terms of what he's added earlier this week. Uh, here you got TLT, right, um, a plus 100 basis points, and IIGD plus 100 basis points, right? So uh, the other thing, too, that you really want to call out uh, as well is, okay, you know, if, you, if you're trading just on a weekly basis and you still own some of this here, platinum, platinum and silver, well, guess what? He's out of these guys. Uh, sorry, that's uh, Silver Juniors. Um, so, again, those were taken out of ETF Pro. You got that the other day. Uh, but it's also, you, you know, on, on the 8th, um, you know, he also signaled to you that he, you know, these out on the Malco family office as well. So these are really key things, right? Whether you're, again, as I said, whether you're, you're touching your portfolio, you know, daily or reviewing things weekly, monthly, quarterly, you know, tracking this information can really help you understand kind of, you know, what, what you know, uh, where, what, where is he focusing? And, and it can help with a signal strength standpoint as well. Because if he's adding to something, that means, you know, he, he's looking to, to maintain that exposure 
to really grow that exposure, and likely those things are at the you know, low end of the risk range, or, and if they're not at the low end of the risk range, then that signal strength is really increasing, and you may be adding to it kind of near the, the middle or, or the bottom half of the risk range, right? So um, not every, it, 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 it's not quite as simple and as easy as bottom of the risk range means I add X, X percent. Um, unfortunately, it really does depend on, some sig on signal strength of that underlying piece of inventory. And so therefore, if something's really moving, you know, something's moving higher, um, right? If something's moving, if price is moving, if price is moving up and that low end of the risk range keeps kind of ticking higher, 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 well, if we get a down day, but it doesn't reach the bottom end of the risk range, which might've been here, right? Well, you might, you might add, 50, you know, plus 50 basis points, right? Plus 50. Uh, so again, uh, so again, I'm just going to put BIPs just to be very specific. Um, so right, it might not have hit the bottom of the risk range, but that you know those those higher those higher lows are are going are are being represented, or or if you're tracking it closely within the risk range, those higher lows are being made, and uh, you know in this case it's almost very likely that higher highs are also being kind of kind of uh, represented inside the risk range. So again, you know this is a great way. It's one of the benefits of the Macro Pro product and having the re-rank and and getting that glimpse inside a key um, you know long only account. Uh, for for um, everybody at home within Hedge Nation, so uh, hopefully that's that's helpful. And I think another key call out here too, just from a portfolio construction standpoint, you'll see although not a big you know big minus in the BTAL, uh, but his uh, gold exposure and silver and uh, basically precious metals in general is lives in here, right? So um, you look at uh, let me use a different color. I'll use uh, purple, All right? So you got precious metals right here. And right there, right, um, and those have come out the last two days. Um, and again, you know, top three things this morning was along the uh, like real rates and nominal rates. Uh, the move there that's impacting uh, gold in particular and precious metals uh, to the downside. So they don't like that move. Uh, you know, it's a, there's a correlation factor, blah blah blah. But um, yeah, so they don't make that move. So you know, Keith was you know has been seeing those kind of real rates increase and the 10-year and the 30-year and the longer end of the curve um, sort of move higher the last couple of days. And he's been uh, you know basically decreasing his exposure to precious metals here and um, to. Uh, there, so right, so you got, oh, sorry, I missed gold. You get the point, there's another up here. <laughs> All right, so basically uh, 100 basis points across the board there in each of those, um, in each of those particular pieces of inventory. So overall, if you do that math, he's uh, minus 500 bips, right, on his precious metals exposure, precious metals, right, so um, yeah. So again, this, uh, it's, it's really important to kind of, you know, these are a lot of different read throughs here, right? So precious metals, he's down 500, he's, he's taken out 500 basis points of precious metals exposure. He's taken out 100 basis points of uranium. He's taken, um, uh, yeah, so again, just things that, you know, pivots inside the portfolio that, uh, yeah, again, this is just like a, a critical kind of read through. So if you're not tracking it, it's, you know, tracking it um, on, a, on a kind of day over day basis and, and a regular basis, uh, you may be missing some of these uh, components and these takeaways.